Hey, good evening. I like to call the Litchfield Zoning Board of Adjustment meeting to order on December 18th at 7 p.m. I'll stop by having members uh, introduce themselves for attendance purposes as well. Uh, John Burdell, member. John Devereaux, <coughs> member. Laura Gandia, member. Al Gilbo, member. Jeff Blackwell, building inspector. <coughs> Thank you. Um, so the first thing that I want to do has been brought to my attention about our bylaws, that one section of our bylaws. Four point five. Four point five. Nope. That's not. That's oh, sorry. Four point four. So 4.4 .4 of our bylaws um, states, and I'm taking this a little bit out of order because we need to for the uh, rest of the meeting. 4.4 .4 of our bylaws state, <clears throat> a quorum for regular meetings and special meetings shall consist of three members. A quorum for public hearings shall be five members. The quorum for public hearings may be reduced by the board to three members in response to a written request by an applicant. So we have not had five members for public hearings in it's quite some time. Um, so we are, we do have that, but our bylaws also provide that the board reserves the, the right to waive any portion of its bylaws at its own discretion as circumstances in justice may so require. So in order for us to conduct any public hearings tonight, we need to waive that provision of section 4.4. .4. So if the board wants to do that, I'll need a motion to waive section 4.4 .4 to allow uh, to allow us to proceed forward without five members for the public hearing. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. And also with that, um, I am recommending that we amend that provision because we don't have five members <coughs> for public hearings. Um, in order to amend the bylaws, <coughs> section eight says these bylaws may be amended by a majority vote of the members provided that such amendment is read at the regular meeting immediately preceding the regular meeting at which the vote is taken. Amendments become effective the day following the adoption. So I was thinking of amending 4.4 quorum just to say a quorum for regular meetings and public hearings. Well, a quorum for regular meetings, public Regular meetings, special meetings, and public hearings shall consist of three members. Agreed. And that's it. Agreed. So that's being read for the public. That That's going to be a proposed change to the amendments, and we will vote on that next meeting. Okay. Okay. So with that, we can move forward with, um, we have a rehearing request for that. Um, so we have two rehearing requests. I'm going to just pass those. In. We have copies for everybody in here. Did you make copies? Should be four copies for everybody, yes. Uh, yeah. We have two. I thought we had one rehearing, which we one already approved. And then we have a motion to rehear for the other one, which is the second one, right? Is that down the bottom? Oh, okay. Yeah, so actually, so we have to this so we don't get confused. So okay. take that back for one second. So the first case is the rehearing. So we originally heard the case. The applicant filed a motion for a rehearing. The board yep. granted that motion for a rehearing. So now we have that hearing in front of us. And it was put in the newspaper and it was properly noticed. So now we have a re case number 0717-2023-1, a variance from LZO Article 310 to construct a building within the 50-foot building setback from a right-of-way in the residential district. Name of applicant, Leon and Maria Dutton. Owner of property, Leon and Maria Dutton. Location of property, 9 Woodhawk Way, Litchfield, <coughs> New Hampshire, 03052. Map 8, lot 124. And who will be presenting? Madam Chair, members of the board, good evening. My name is Andy Perlman, attorney with Prunier and Perlman um, of Nashua representing uh, Maria and Leon Dutton of Nine Woodhawk Way, um, <clears throat> seeking a variance from Section uh, 310, setback variance from the right of way. Um, and let me just get organized for a sec. So, so 
so the Excuse me, give me just, yeah. this one. so the top section of everything was the original application as requested yep and then the second package was all the information that came in for the motion for the rehearing so this is our motion so right that okay. right so everything's in there okay are, are there copies for everybody here <clears throat> yes I will be referring to my letter of um, October 6th. Right. Madam Chair, let me just put on the record, and uh, I'll leave it alone, but I'm just going to put on the record our objection to having to proceed without a full board of five members, um, and notwithstanding your just, your just waiver of your own bylaws that waiver was to my client's detriment and so we object to that process the statute requires a board of five members we should have a full board of five members i understand don't but for the record we um, um uh, put that objection on the record in attorney Perlman, the waiver of the bylaws does not preclude you from making a motion to continue it now if you're so desired i'm not going to say that's going to be granted i'm going to say we i had to do that so we can conduct the public hearing if you wanted to ask the board to continue that i'm not precluding your right to do that we would ask the board to continue the the hearing then uh, until there is a uh, a full board of five whenever that may be okay i understand having lived in town it's hard to get people onto this board um but um we think it's only fair that we have the best possible opportunity to present our case and that, re that requires just like the statute requires a full board of five members right now um we had some, you and I had some emails earlier, and you, there was concern about um, hearing notices, whatnot. Mm -hmm. The Duttons um, can wait this out; it's not um, adversely affecting anyone, right? So we would uh, prefer to wait it out until there's a full board of five members. So um, we have a request made by the applicant to continue the case until we have a, a full five-member board. There's no right in the statute for as to grant that request to have a full five-member board. Um, my concern with waiting to have a full five-member board is just the notice and the requirements. So if the applicant wanted it to continue it to a date certain or you know push it off several months, I don't have any problem with that. It's, and this case isn't affecting anyone as far as I'm concerned. Um, so I don't have a problem if we continue that, but my concern is to continue it to a certain date where we're gonna have to, at the applicant's expense, uh, re-notice and republish that. So if we wanted to continue it, because we don't have, we're not, we don't have five members. I don't know when we're gonna have five members um, to continue it for several months um, until, I mean, or in December, if we said we're gonna continue it until April, whatever date that would be, I'm not, I don't have any objections to doing that. I don't know what the board's thoughts are with that. I, I agree with you. I don't know when we're gonna have five. It could go into the spring before we have five, right. if we even get five. And, and of us who may drop off that time too, we back down the deficit again. Right. And, so. I, and I, yeah. Yeah, I would just comment that we have received two. We have, right. But, but I also want to. interested parties. I want to wait just a little bit longer too to Get, see if we have any more applicants. I know we just started publicizing that. I want to give other people the opportunity to kind of show some interest. So well, I can't. I mean, it's been publicized. It's been up for about three months. So we got two in the last week. Because I didn't think it was up that it's much. Up, it's been up. It's been up and on, up in a couple times. Okay. Because I know it's, I mentioned it's always camp. expired off, and it's come. It's happened. Right. It's up for thirty days, and, and then, then it's off. Right. So um, that that's my concern. Um, one getting five members, but. I don't have an issue continuing it. It's just making sure that we meet our statutory requirements for notice in uh, posting it in the paper. I mean, does it make sense to continue it for the time when, just before construction would have to really probably happen? So would it make sense to say we'll continue to April or March, that hear it in March and hopefully they can build in April potentially? Or yeah, like I'm fine with that as long as, I mean, our job is to make sure we continue yeah. it to a date. Sorry. I just don't want to see it continue to January and have the same right. problem. No. February, well, have the same problem was, if, I, if I may. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, if the board is so inclined, we would ask that this hearing be continued to your March hearing. Okay. Uh, because this, uh, should we um, have success with the setback variance, uh, we just then go to building permit. There's no planning board involved. 
Okay. Right? So we could build this coming spring. Okay. Uh, I was having that very same thought. And if you, at this hearing, continue to a date certain, that's the formal notice. You don't have mm -hmm. to no notify. It is, but I still have concern with such a length and time between that of not sending out additional notices. If you want to do it, it's cheap money. If okay. you want to do additional notices, I'll do it. Okay. That's fine. So the, I'll make the, the motion to... Wait, to, let's just okay. get the date. So the date is March 18th. Okay. Great. I'd like to make a motion to continue this case to our regular scheduled meeting in March 18th, 2024. Um, okay. Would you add in with the condition that we send out new abutter notices and legal publications? With new legal abutters and the notifications. Okay. Thank um, you. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so this case has been continued to March 18th. Um, Jeff, if you could work with Attorney Proman to get uh, mm -hmm. the stuff for fees and about our notices Absolutely. to re-notice that. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Yep. Do you guys want to give me that paperback? We can just add yeah. it or you can keep it. Just saving. John, did you want to give me that back? I'll just add no, it. No, I didn't want to give that. <laughs> Um, the attorney's letter is not on the portal, though. Can you make sure it goes up there? What's up? The attorney, the, the Andy's letter was not in the portal, I don't think. That's correct. Right. Can we get it posted next time? Uh, I can. Please? If that's, is that part of this? It should be part of the portal Laura, packet. What's that? Should I, should I post attorney form? Oh, absolutely, sure. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Any, yeah. any of the documents that we're looking at should be posted on the portal. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So, okay. Um, while that's out there, the happier people are, the happier I am. <laughs> All right, so the next case is case number 12-18-2023-1, a special exception from LZO Article 1200, Wetlands Conservation District, Section 12080A, to construct streets, roads, and other access ways and utility right-of-way easements within the Wetland Conservation District. Name of applicant, Signature Homes, <coughs> LLC, <coughs> Owner of property 18-68, Seth Lucas Miller, 18-62, and 18-64, John E. Nelson II and Tay Nelson. Location of property off Pearson Street, across from Marl Street, Litchfield, New Hampshire, 03052, map 18, lot 62, 64, and 68. Laura, you should see in there uh, some letters from residents. There should be three letters from residents on top of uh, as well as comment from planning board and uh, conservation. Good evening. I just have two. I don't know how the one. Mm -hmm. I just have the Quatlin Ad one, but I'm not seeing a folder for this one. Motion for rehearing. Oh, here we go. Never mind. Yeah. Is it okay if I pass something out? Yeah, sure can. I'm not sure what you guys have, but um, just a memorandum that I think was submitted. And then I also have a little exhibit that was also presented to the So we're here tonight to um, discuss the special exception 
from LZO, Article 1200, Wetlands Conservation District, to construct streets, roads, other access ways, and utility right-of-way easements within the Wetland Conservation District. Um, so as you can see in the little handout I gave you and the plans I'm sure you've seen, um, we have two um, wetland impacts associated with the uh, proposed roadway on Tallarico Street, which is off of um, Morrill Street. Um, the total wetland impact is just under 4,200 square feet. Total wetland buffer impact is just under 23,000 square feet. Um, we, like I said, we met with the CONCOM about a week and a half ago. Um, everything went well, we got their approval. And so we're just here tonight to um, get your feedback and answer any questions. And what was the impact to the wetland buffer you said? Uh, the wetland buffer impact, it's on the, the little exhibit, but it's 22,749. Oh, there it is on top. Okay. Um, okay. Yep, thank you. So it's about half an acre. Yeah, just about. <clears throat> if you just wanted to go through the criteria. Okay. So first criteria is um, proposed use, construction, or alteration shall be constructed in such a way that it does not unduly restrict the flow of water. Um, so the culverts that we have under the uh, crossings have been appropriately designed to handle um, during design storm events. Um, there's two um, culverts on each crossing. The first one is two 24-inch culverts, and the next one is two 36-inch culverts. Next thing, proposed use is not in conflict with any and all purposes and intentions less than section 1200.01 of this ordinance. Um, so wetland disturbance areas have been minimized to their greatest extent. <coughs> um, we chose this crossing because, um, as you can see in the little exhibit, it's the skinniest part of the wetland to cross, so less impact. Um, and um, all runoff is um, collected via a closed drainage system, so that helps with the impact too, as far as um, how far that extends. Next thing, user activity proposed and its attendant impacts cannot reasonably be avoided because, so the wetlands stretch across the entire parcel, so the only way to access the western half is through a wetland crossing. It can be shown that the least damaging route and methodology have been selected, and that which is being proposed is the best practical alternative because, um, so like I said, this is the area with the least potential impact, and that was um, determined through multiple design iterations. Even more, so. It can be shown that reasonable and acceptable impact mitigation measures have been incorporated where necessary and appropriate to minimize wetland loss or degradation because so the wetland points um, do not necessitate, necess necessitate mitigation. Uh, the valuable wetland areas are preserved and water conveyance is maintained through properly sized culverts like I mentioned previously. Um, next one is no significant impact on the aquatic habitat or rare endangered species as listed by the state of New Hampshire or federal government. Um, so this project requires a NHDS alteration of ter terrain permit which also involves um, communication with New Hampshire Fish and Game. And um, <clears throat> we've been working with uh, Fish and Game um, addressing their concerns and um, they are okay with the plan and its impacts to the wetlands. Um, next one is it can be shown that adequate erosion and sediment control measures are appropriate um, to use are incorporated as detailed by the current recognized BMPs. Um, so appropriate erosion control measures have been implemented in the plans such as uh, slope fences, um, slope stabilization. <coughs> and the last one is it can be shown that state wetland permits as required have been obtained. Um, so we are going to be working to get a 
state wetland permit and when we do so copies will be forwarded to the town Thank you. I'm just going to read in because our special exception requires, as you know, input from the uh, Conservation Commission, the mm -hmm. Planning Board, and the Health Officers. I'm just going to read that in. Okay. So we have a letter dated December 18th, 2023, from Joan McKibben, Vice Chair, Litchfield Conservation Commission. Dear Chairman Gandhi and Board Members, at the December 7th, 2023 conservation meeting, the Commission discussed the wetland crossings and buffer impacts on the proposed Tolaco Street with a developer's engineer. At this time, we approved the idea of the stream crossing and impacts at road station 14 plus 00 and between station 16 plus 00 and 17 plus 00 for a total wetland impact of 4,197 square feet. We are awaiting input from New Hampshire Fish and Game regarding the type of culvert used in these crossings. Open bottom or closed pipe culverts. The buffer impact of 22,749 square feet was addressed at the, was it also addressed at the corresponding road crossings and was approved. We would like to see a condition on the plan for the metal protected wetland buffer do not disturb four inch round signs placed on the 50 foot setback line from the wetland on lots five, six, seven, eight, and lots 10, 11, 12, and 21. There should be enough placement of signs so the homeowner clearly knows where the non-disturbed buffer is located. The area is likely a sensitive travel corridor for amphibians and reptiles. New Hampshire Fish and Game should have comments and reporting protocols should these animals be encountered during construction. Thank you for the opportunity to comment on this application. Um, then we have from the planning board, um, comments from the planning board from Michael Croto. Dear, uh, this is Monday, December 18th at 3.43 p.m. Dear Chairman Gandia, on December 5th, 2023, the Litchfield Planning Board reviewed the application for special exception regarding the above mentioned property. The board voted 5-0-0 to issue no comments regarding this application for a special exception. Thank you for your attention to this matter. And the last would be you, Jeff. Did you have any? Yes, I have no comment on this. Okay. <clears throat> so that's what we have. Oh, Jeff, I just thought it was odd that the planning board had no comment. So. I found that the, all of the last several applications for the wetland special exceptions, they do not offer comments. I think they want to reserve their comments for site plan review. Gotcha. That's what I believe. Makes sense. But that's a guess. I guess that makes sense. Uh, but they have not offered comments in the past. Okay, so that's what we have. Um, I do have letters for public input, but I'm not going to do those just yet. So I'm going to go back to the applicant in the board and see if we have any questions for him. In your response, you said that the valuable wetland areas are preserved. Um, which of these are the valuable wetland areas? I mean, they're all valuable, so the... We just try to minimize impacts as much as possible. Okay. Um, that's why the crossings are where they are and the culverts are appropriately sized to allow wildlife to cross through and um, storm events to not exceed the roadway crossings. How are the, the culverts um, chosen? Because it sounds like the Conservation Commission were unclear about which culverts were really the best ones to be leveraged. To watch the meeting was interesting. Yeah, so we chose... Um, on the first crossing, which is, if you're looking at the plants, the one on the right, um, two 24-inch side-by-side culverts, and the next one's a two 36-side-by-side uh, -side inch culverts. Um, so those were picked um, because they hydraulically work um, with the storm events in the wetlands, and um, Fish and Game had no comments. Um, I just need to reach out to them and get uh, confirmation that it's um, equal or better than the open box, which um, the Conservation Commission had mentioned. Yeah, the, the yeah. natural bottom one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, last question, I think. Um, this, this watershed area, I believe, when it connects to Pearson, is marked as a no-salt area. Mm -hmm. Is there any, any 
ideas of whether or not salt is going to be allowed to be used on these these roads. If this is a no salt area, no salt will be used. Uh, we'll use sand or another measure to um, prevent uh, ice. Isn't that, isn't that typically defined by the road agent as far mm. as conservation goes? Right, they'll define those areas as they I think. Probably. Yeah. I'm not sure. We could put a stipulation in if if we yeah. chose to, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would be suggested, I guess. Any other questions? Do you have any input on it? No, I was going to say, um, I know Highway has looked at the plans for planning board. Okay. So. Could you just show me where on here the uh, culverts are? The um, so I, I see those. I like green and yellow areas. So on, on the second sheet of that little packet, it just gets into more detail about the grading, drains, and utilities. So that's where it's labeled. It's the green section, though, on the color line. Mm -hmm. green. Yeah. Yep. So a lot of four to, I mean, on the, on the front page, you have like four things kind of tagged in that area. One, yeah, three, so, three, so three zero, three six, one, one, six, one. Like, mm -hmm. what is that? Yeah, so the, the green, the green shaded areas are the wetland impacts, and that adds up to the 4,197, okay. and then the yellow is the wetland buffer impact. Okay. Gotcha. All right, so now I'm flipping to page two to see where the culverts are. Mm -hmm. So the first one is at about station 1400. So the water flows um, from the top of the page down, and then the Can second crossing is at between 1600 and 1700. And then, so the water then comes around and flows back up Would you mind pointing that out for us on this yeah. page? If you want to open up and just this. So the first crossing is right here. The, the water comes down here. And then okay. you have two 40 foot long, 24 inch culverts. Okay. Yeah, I see it. It comes this way. And then you have the two 40 foot long, 36 inch culverts. Great. Did everybody see that? Yeah. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yep. And so what's the 40 number in front of that? That's just the total length of the culvert okay. from one end to the other. And now I know the package that was submitted, the site plan that was submitted, it showed more houses kind of in this area, I thought, than what's shown in this plan. Is that, did you reconfigure some of the layouts of the houses or is that just? Um, I don't believe no. so. The, okay. the cul-de-sac uh, changed slightly but um, around the wetland crossing, nothing's changed. Okay. And do we know what type of wildlife are in that area? Has Fish and Game give us, given you any feedback as to corridor travel or? Yeah, so there's no wildlife specifically on our site but they do a check of um, about like five miles from the site around and there's uh, like Blanding's turtles a couple miles away, um, another endangered snake a um, mile away. Um, so they're aware of that and um, are okay with what we have proposed at the moment. So do they give you feedback, like a written recommendation or anything yet? Fishing game? Um, so, <coughs> Yeah, a couple of their comments were just like um, eliminate sumps from catch basins, add a couple notes to the plans. But um, like I said, I'm going to reach out and get um, like a formal, informal writing that they are in favor of the culverts as opposed to the open box um, natural bottom culvert. So you have RCP mm -hmm. going down the road. Is there a retention? Water retention pond? Yeah, so the detention pond is at the far end of the site. Open space area. Down here? Yeah. 
So that's the third page of that little packet that I passed out. So it's just a, the whole thing is a closed drainage system collected through catch basins and then piped down to the. So your R RCP goes to uh, lots? Um, I believe most of it or all of it is actually all of it, but the last little part that goes towards the pond yep. is in the right of way. And the part that crosses through a mm -hmm. lot. So uh, between, so in here so between be a right 16 and 17. 17 yeah. 16 is the easement. So yeah, between uh, 16 and 17, there's um, a proposed drainage easement, 20 yeah. foot wide. I have to ask that question. There's a lot that we have at 3A that had that problem. I know this is being classified as an open space subdivision. Mm -hmm. I know we have people here. Can you just explain what an open space subdivision is for folks? Sure. So in design of this um, parcel, we put together a yield plan that showed the maximum number of lots that we could theoretically build um, with the town regulations. And then um, the open space essentially takes that. Uh, the number is 28, so that's how many we have here. And there's, uh, there's um, the lot sizes are smaller in the open space requirements. And, um, but with, with that, part of the original parcel is dedicated as open space mm -hmm. to not be touched or disturbed. So when you say the lot sizes are smaller, um, what's the average size of the lots here, if you know? Um, I believe it's about a half acre or so. Some are bigger, like um, lot nine, of course, in the middle, uh, and then a few around the cul-de-sac. So just so people are watching at home, like you could have put more houses in here, but you're not because you're dedicating some of that land to open so space. So we couldn't because the yield plan only allowed for 28. Okay. So that is what we are allowed in the open space okay. subdivision. So 28 was the maximum you could get. Maximum. Yep. Okay. But with that, you had this other space that you're dedicating to open mm -hmm. space. Yep. only open space well there's two open space areas the one across from lot number nine and the open space behind lots 15 and 16. yep and that extends all the way to charles bancroft highway to the left okay any other questions so like lots like lot 21 or uh 24 how big are those slots? Um, so I have that right here. Is uh, twenty six thousand one hundred twenty five, so just over a half an acre, point six acres to be exact. And then you asked for twenty four. Yeah. Uh, 20. Twenty four is twenty one thousand eight hundred three, so that's point five zero one acres, so just over half an acre. So 20, lot 21, you have a significant amount of wetland buffer impact, mm -hmm. pretty much the whole front yeah. of that lot, right? Yes. Yep. That's not a good lot. Same thing with, you know, I'm looking at, now I'm starting to look at six, seven, even eight. 
So six, seven, eight have, I mean, they don't have any wetland buffer impacts. We stayed out of those. Um, they do have wetlands and wetland buffers on their property, but um, it was designed to not encroach on that area at all. But those lots are, are they under an acre? Um, so six is 0.63, seven is 0.63, and eight is 0.91. Typically what happens with those lots like five, I mean, six, seven, and eight, people don't realize that they have this wetland in yep. the back and Absolutely. they encroach and they build and they put sheds yeah, and they, you know, do all that stuff. That's why there's those signs yeah, that are supposed to be put out to let everybody know when they're buying the lot that they aren't supposed to do that. Unfortunately, some people don't understand exactly what that means, but our regulations just require that those signs be put there. But I still don't like Lot 21. So how much space is that to put a driveway in on that Lot 21 without um, going into the um, wetland buffer? So you the know? wetland buffer impact on Lot 21 can't really be avoided because that would have been an impact anyway with the roadway crossing. Mm -hmm. um, but we have um, proposed driveway on the left side of lot 21 just a 12-foot driveway coming down and then a house in the back just that little space that's not impacting the buffer right so, so on lot 21 like this little space right here yeah that's where you're gonna put the driveway so the driveway is in the buffer a little bit but like i said that area would have been impacted anyway with uh, the yeah page two and three show the driveways yep So, I mean, you put a driveway through the buffer, nobody's going to know that that land is a wetland buffer. Mm -hmm. so 21, I think, is uh, problematic. I'm assuming that's what the plan goes to decide whether they can build on it or not. What's that? It's up to the plan to decide they can build on it, though, right? Well, they can make a condition they can't build on it. Well, we, could, we can do. I mean, we can, you know. We have concerns with that particular lot. We have authority too, as well. Any other questions the board has of the applicant? Well, the application is for wet impact for the culvert, it's not for the property, I thought. Is it gonna, it's for all of it then at this point? Is it whole, it'll be for the whole impact of the whole project? For, yes. Jeff, did you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, just going to point out the minimum lot size for the open space uh, conservation is half an acre mm -hmm. of contiguous dry land, excluding wetlands, uh, flood hazard areas, utility rights way, uh, and other restrictions upon the land, such as easements or covenants. All right, so so there's, there's a few here. Does it matter if it's a wetland? It's no, you'd have to exclude any wetlands. Yes, you can. Okay, so in the calculation, so 21 right. wouldn't be, it wouldn't even match the right size. The well, it's a, it's a contiguous dry land, so. So they don't, so they have to there's, back that up. There's out. a small amount of wetlands. In the front. Front half, so the okay. front half. It's the right. issue that buffer, it's a driveway, though. Buffer is different, so. But the impact's a driveway. But that's not the build. That's not considered the building cal calculation. The driveway. Correct. So lot seven, which has a fair amount of um, wetlands in the back, are you are you saying that that there is a half acre? Of I would have to look at each one of these lots, and I have not done that okay. at this point. So we're not approving the lots, we're improving the crossings. Right. That's what I was saying. I didn't think that the lots mattered. Uh, just as it was the crossings that we're approving. But impact to wetlands. Caused is, by the crossings. Is, right, is, is part of it. Okay. okay. But 
Well, what he, I think what he's saying is it's already shown as a buffer impact. Mm -hmm. So, so why not put the driveway there? Basically, yeah. right. So if you're impacting the buffer, mm -hmm. I mean, and we could, in theory, say that you know, no houses or no driveways or structures for that impact. They're already impacting it. You know, with the culverts and doing the road. But, but what? Well, we're not in our yep. yet, so. All right, we'll get there. All right, so any other questions for the applicant? No. Did you want to respond? Yeah, if I, if I may. Uh, Attorney Andy Sullivan for the applicant. Uh, and just to reiterate what was said, so the lots all meet the town requirements in terms of dry area, wetland, buffers, and that sort of thing. So they may appear visually, some of more impact or not, uh, but they all meet the town requirements, including that driveway can go over a buffer, et cetera, and that even if those two lots you've been discussing the last five or so minutes are out, the, the impact would still be there. Is that mm -hmm. correct? So as the gentleman over, this gentleman over here said, I mean, the question is uh, not about the lots so much about, but the special exception on the impact, and it's about as minimum as you can get, irrespective of those lots or any other of the lots that you may feel that you know, aren't, aren't peak. Uh, so those other issues, I think, really within the jurisdiction of the planning board, not the zoning board. Any questions for Attorney Sullivan? Thank you. Okay, I'm going to open it up. Did you want to say anything else? I'm also. Okay. I'm going to we open up to public input. We do have some letters. I believe that I want to read into. So I, so I do have three letters that I'm going to read in. The first is from Kevin Durham, 16 Pearson Street, Litchfield, New Hampshire. Uh, Litchfield Zoning Board of Adjustment. I hope this letter finds you well, as I will not be able to attend the meeting on Monday the 18th. I'm writing to express my strong opposition to this special exception requested by Signature Homes LLC pertaining to case number 12182023-1, which involves the construction of streets, roads, accessways, and utility right-of-way easements within the Wetland Conservation District, as outlined in the Litchfield Zoning Ordinance Article 12. 100.00A. As an abutter and a concerned member of the community, I believe that granting this special exception poses significant risk to our local environment and the well being of our community. I urge the Zoning Board of Adjustment to carefully consider the following reasons for opposition. One, conservation and wetland protection. The Wetlands Conservation District exists to safeguard critical ecosystems, preserve biodiversity, and maintain water quality. Granting a special exception to construct infrastructure within this protected area contradicts the fundamental purpose of conservation efforts. Wetlands play a crucial role in filtering pollutants, preventing floods, and providing habitat for various species. Potential water damage. Construction activities within the Wetlands Conservation District can disrupt the natural flow of water, leading to potential water damage in the form of increased runoff, erosion, and alterations to the hydrological balance. This poses a direct threat to the integrity of wetlands and may result in adverse effects on adjacent properties and water bodies. Three, long-term environmental impact. The long-term consequence of altering the Wetlands Conservation District for the construction purposes are likely to extend beyond the immediate project area. Such alterations may disrupt the delicate balance of the ecosystem, leading to irreversible damage to plant and animal life, as well as the overall ecological health of the region. I respectfully request that the Zoning Board of Adjustment carefully weighs the potential environmental impacts before making a decision on this special exception request. I believe it is crucial to prioritize the pres preservation of our natural resources for the benefit of current and future generations. If you require any additional information or would like to discuss these concerns further, 
Please do not hesitate to contact me. I appreciate your attention to this matter and trust that the zoning board will consider the broader implications of this special exception request. Thank you for your time and consideration. Sincerely, Kevin Durham. Do you want to respond to that or? Um, like I said previously, uh, we designed this to minimize impacts as much as possible. Uh, the only way to access the entire western half of the site is through a roadway crossing um, and all culverts have been designed to um, allow wildlife to pass through like he's concerned about and storm events to uh, continue to flow as previously um, as they previously were and you, and you have a right to cross that well and get to your dry area correct yeah. back lane, as they say what was that uh, it, the applicant has a right to cross a wetland to get to back land. Mm -hmm. And what he's saying is they're doing that in the most minimal way they can do that. Uh, in terms of any, uh, <coughs> water damage during construction, uh, you know, they'll comply whatever uh, standards are appropriate in industry and the state to when they do their construction and build silt fence and things of that sort. Uh, uh, the developer behind this has built hundreds, if not thousands, of homes in this state over the last 30 years. He's well familiar with all, all the precautions he has to take. Do we know if Mr. Durham's letter was sent to the Conservation Commission? Do we know that? Did he have uh, any contact with the Conservation Commission? I am not aware. I, 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 I believe he sent comments as well to Planning Board. Yeah. Because, I mean, the conservation already weighed in and they don't see the impact that, mm -hmm. that Mr. Durham is outlining, right? So, and they're, they're the entity that takes care of our conservation mm -hmm. property. So I'm just concerned there's a disconnect somewhere. Okay. All right. The second letter is from Wendy Durham, 16 Pearson Street, Litchfield, New Hampshire. And I believe this is the same exact letter, so I am not going to read it into the record again, but I just want everybody to know that this is the same exact letter. So Kevin Durham and Wendy Durham at 16 Pearson Street both express the same three concerns, conservation and wetland protection, potential water damage, and long-term environmental impacts. <clears throat> Do we know what 16 is on this map? Yeah, it's the fourth one down, I think, from the road. Okay. And the next one is Cody Durham, 16 Pearson Street, Litchfield, New Hampshire. This again is the same letter by Wendy and Kevin. Um, he lives at the same residence. Again, the three um, categorized, the three concerns, conservation and wetland protection, potential water damage, long-term environmental impacts. So we have three letters in opposition. From the same household. From the same household. So, yep, uh, 16 Durham, same exact letters. Any other comments to those letters? Okay. So now I'm gonna open it up to public input. Is there anybody in the public in favor of the application that wishes to speak? Okay, there is none. Is there anybody in opposition to the application who would like to speak? Come on up. Sir, you can just approach the mic. You can stay, you can say whatever you want. If you just want to have a seat there and just state your name and address. We're all friends. We are. <laughs> I don't know if there's someone else. Oh, no, I'm flying solo tonight. Hi, my name is Paul Mallory, and I. I don't know what my lot number is. I could show it to you. Sure. This, uh, this little green finger right here between the two. That's Charles Bancroft Highway is where you're Charles at. Charles Bancroft, yep. right. I'm kind of the antelope in the jaws of the lion there. Okay. And what is your address? 367 Charles Bancroft Highway. Okay. And I purchased my home from uh, John Nelson when he carved it up and, and whatnot. My, my biggest concern, and I don't know if this is the right place to do that, but it's been my concern the whole time, is that whenever they start digging or whenever they start doing whatever it is they're going to do, uh, they're going to take water and, and funnel it to something, and, and that ultimately can get to, to my land, which... I believe they themselves have determined is or have called the bottom of the hill. Mm -hmm. So I, I have no, you know, I'm not a stakeholder in this. Nobody's asked 
come to me beforehand to talk about it at all. I've had no, no prior knowledge of anything. I've only learned this through the required notification that, that they have to give. They did invite me to du Dubai, is it? Mm -hmm. Dubai's offices to talk about it, uh, but I wouldn't term it as anything enlightening other than this is what we're gonna do. There are other abutters that I believe have been involved in this. Um, I'll just say, you know, it's it's clear there's the, the Seth Miller and, and I don't know, there's a, looks like there's a right of way down there between a couple other ones. But my, my biggest thing is, is when they start digging and when they start culverting and they start retentioning and things like that, you know, they, 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 took uh, uh, it upon themselves in one of the meetings to talk about how um, it was like a, a three-year flood something or other. And I would just say that whatever we've had for the last two days has, has been amazing. If anyone cares to walk around back there right now, I, I think it would be illuminating for, for anyone to do that. I'm not against the land. I'm not against anyone doing what they are going to do for their land. I don't know that you have to fit all 10 pounds of flour in the 10 pound bag. I don't have an answer for that. What I care about is exactly what I bought and that it stays intact. And that is seeing the deer, seeing the turkeys, seeing, hearing the foxes, the koi dogs, things that I don't know if this is the right place to do that in. Um, but I just, the, the biggest thing about the, the, the buffer zones and, and things like that that I wanted to bring up is once you start digging and moving dirt, I don't know, not everybody knows where this stuff is gonna go, and I don't know who to go to for that. So the board is my first line of defense, and I don't know who else to bring that to, you know? And, I, and that's, that's really the biggest thing that, that I have to say. I don't wanna have to get a lawyer, but I guess I could, but so that's kinda where we're at. That's where I'm at. Sure. So, Good friends. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, this project, um, when you do a project like this or any project, any size really, um, one of the biggest things is hydrological studies, pre-development versus post-development. Um, this is a closed drainage system at all outlets to a um, detention basin, which would be around here. I know there are lots over here. So. We're honestly making things better because our post-development conditions show a reduction in um, outfall from these storm events. Um, I'd also, um, I'm not sure if this conversation is for this meeting, perhaps. Um, this sounds more like a planning discussion. I know that we're here to just discuss the um, crossings and the impacts associated with those tonight. I know tomorrow is the um, planning board meeting, so I, I'm not sure if that's a more appropriate place to discuss this matter. I think you can enlighten this gentleman with some more information. Go ahead. I, I, I think one thing that I'll say is, is once you bring any piece of equipment there to dig anything, it, you don't know everything that's gonna happen when you start to do that. And, and we can, and you can say, and, and Attorney Sullivan can talk about how many houses and how many developments um, Signature Homes has made, um, but I'm not here to talk about those things. So Once you bring equipment on to what you're saying, make it better, show me, enlighten me, make me an ally. I'm up for it. I just, I, I, I I, I, I don't have any other avenue, whether it's this meeting or come to another meeting or come to the ones in November or oh, what. I'm, there's a planning board meeting tomorrow that will discuss in more detail what's happening here. So I would, if you have concerns, I would recommend that you go to the planning board meeting okay. tomorrow night. So to address some of your questions, the wetland crossings that he's asking for, and correct me if I misspeak, mm -hmm. uh, uh, right in this area, okay? <clears throat> so you're way over here. Yep. So um, are there any impacts that you, or changes that you see coming from these impact crossings that will affect his property here? 
Nothing associated with the wetland crossings would affect. Um, sorry, what was your name again? Paul. Paul's property. Um, those have been designed to handle the storm events, and um, like I said, the other matters I think are more uh, planning matters as far as mm -hmm. the uh, drainage down here and right. everything else. Do you okay. understand that difference? I, I, I understand what he's saying. Okay. So again, so this is a wetland. I didn't get a notice for the planning board. I just got a notice for this one. Does is, that mean? Is that a public hearing tomorrow night? Yes. Continued, Continued from, right. Yeah. So, when so you wouldn't have got, right. Continued from the one in November? Yes. Then there was a next one that they continued in November. Yeah, they're just continued. Right. So the board is required to so send out the initial notices for the hearing. So did you receive one of yes, those notices? Yes, I got okay. the, that was the, the first one in, was that the one in October? Okay. So, so we're still dealing with that notice. So that notice yes. is the one that they're just saying, oh, by the way, this. It was continued, but it sounds like Correct. there's a public hearing I tomorrow believe, night? I believe tomorrow night, yes. Okay. Tomorrow night on that. Yes. So All right. again, if you and have concerns. Be, right, and that would be a good place yes. to deal with any okay. storm drainage concerns. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did anybody have any questions for him before you? Um, is there anybody else who wants to speak in opposition? Sure. I am in opposition, but I think I'm at the wrong meeting. I think, I think the planning board is where I sent my letter. The planning board, it sounds like, is what I need to be coming oh. about. Do you want to state anything for the record here? You're more than welcome to. I, I mean, I, I just don't know. It's, I'm going to have the same kind of concerns, and you're going to say it's not up to what the planning board thing, so. I just said to. What time is that meeting? 7, seven, seven o'clock. <laughs> Right. Is there anybody else who would like to speak in opposition? Come on up. State your name and address for the record, please. George Lavash, 13 Pearson Street, Litchfield. Okay. Um, this isn't really, um, since you guys are the zoning board, um, I thought I'd bring up this point. I'm going to bring up this point tomorrow and sure. with the planning board. Um, I think what you can vote on here tonight is just the, well, my thought was just the crossings. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to just bring up the fact that um, this cul-de-sac is going to be uh, 2,300 um, feet long, and Litchfield itself does not have any zoning regulations on length of um, cul-de-sacs, but um, Nashua is 750, I think. Hudson is 1,200 for a limit of cul-de-sacs. Um, Manchester is 600. Londonderry, so I looked up all our surrounding towns. Londonderry does not have one, okay? but so. I don't think there's an ex, um, existing statute to say we can't have a you know cul-de-sac of 2,300 feet. But if you are the people who write the zoning laws or the rules, I don't know if the planning board does. It's so the planning board. It's the planning board. Okay, so I just thought I'd hit as many people as possible sure. that in the future we might want to look into mm -hmm. um, having our zoning to match our surrounding people and mm -hmm. not have these long cul-de-sacs with just a single exit. Thank you, and, and you know, those concerns can be brought to the planning board and the board of selectmen too as well. Right, and like I said, it doesn't exist now, but perhaps we should make you know, good rules going forward. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, George. Uh, is there anybody else? Come on up. Good evening. Uh, Junior Oliveris, 25 Courtland. Uh, I'm not an abutter on this property. We're just offering our opinion, my opinion as a citizen of Litchfield here. Um, so I'm a civil engineer as a background, and here is Monique. She is an engineer as well. Uh, what we have to say about this uh, development is is a development. So the, what the company is proposing to do with the land, obviously it's within the laws and within the regulation. They look and develop that land and make it better for the public. Um, the gentleman here, what was his name? I think he left. Oh, oh they still there, okay. Yeah. Paul. Paul. So Paul, uh, nice to meet you. Paul, when he bought his land, I don't know, 20 years ago, when was... No, it was only uh, 2014. All right, so when he bought his land uh, eight years ago, uh, he expected to keep uh, seeing the deers and the turtle and the foxes and stuff. But this also happened 50 years ago, it happened 100 years ago when his land was developed or other land were developed, where you live were developed. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. I mean, it's human and... Um, we get to the place, we transform the place, and we obviously follow the rules. We try to do the best we can, and that's the whole purpose of it. It's provide housing, it's provide uh, a place to live, 
and obviously like i said respecting all the rules and all the regulations i mean i don't feel like this is, would be uh any bad to the community okay thank you anybody else wishing to speak in opposition any questions for the applicant as a result of the public comment? How about in favor? Oh, yes, in favor first. We did in favor. Yeah. No, we didn't do it in favor, did we? We did, it did we in did favor first. first. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then I did a poll. I must have missed that when no one came <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> I was taking notes. Uh, and the only thing I didn't do was anybody with any questions. Yeah. All right, so somebody want to make a motion to close public input? I'll make a motion to close public input. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so now we are ready to deliberate. So just to clarify, mm -hmm. just the wetland impact. The lots and all of our concern is the planning board. So we can essentially ignore the lots and just look at the crossings. Well, I don't, yeah, I think that's what we should be doing, yes. Yeah. I wouldn't ignore them. I would put them in the proper perspective as far as the overall site design. What do you mean by that? Like when you're looking at it, you're looking at the roadway, you're looking at the lots, the number of lots. I think you have to kind of just look at the overall site design when you're reviewing it. Right. Just putting it in the right perspective. Right, and I, I think they've already been in front of the planning board once, right? They did an initial review of it, what they were planning, and they got their guidance, and this is the result of that guidance, I would assume. It's, yes, but it's, right. It's not, it's been there a couple times, but, right. Yeah. The reason why I asked, oh, I'm sorry, Joe, I didn't yeah. mean to interrupt. No, there's been some changes from the beginning. Sure. So there's been additional property added on, so it has changed in that aspect. Okay. The reason why I mentioned about the lots is that um, we are our either approval, if we were to approve, we are not approving a driveway through the wetland buffer on lot 21. We're not. Our vote does not have anything to do with that. Is that correct? I have an issue with that driveway in there, so yeah, me too. I would not, if I was to consider approving this, I would not approve it if there's a driveway going but, through that wetland buffer. But the impact is the stipulation. But the impact's the same. Well, if you're putting a driveway through that wetland buffer? It's the same. I think we're already having impacts to the uh, flow of water, the wetlands, and the impacts. I don't want any further impact to that wetland. So at that point, that lot, in your mind, is not developable. So and I would also assume that you mean to say lot 9 would not be developable. Lot 9? Know, with that Where's being said. Nine? Well, that's the big lot above. Big but... No, because you're going in through the front. Yeah, but you got in, there's no, you're going into the front, but at some well, point, then, at some point in time, there's, a, there's an impact somewhere. The driveway is. The driveway is not going through. It's on an additional. Uh, the driveway yes. is actually going right through the top of it, right right near the edge of the impact. If you look at the map, mm -hmm. so that means that lot nine says you're not in favor of lot nine being developed neither. Hey, that could be. More yeah, I just I think we're actually I think we're overstepping. We're here to do the crossing only. That's why I'm asking. We can we can certainly write a letter to the planning board going that we have concerns over it. Let them make their determination, but I don't know if we should declare it unbuildable because that's not our call. I don't I, think it's our call. But no, I, I, I disagree. Okay. Um, the reason why I ask is that um, in in theory they should have to come back to us to ask to to um, provide a driveway on lot 21 through the buffer because that's a buffer impact we're not approving that buffer impact we're approving the road impact. no you you are because that's part of it the buffer impact is part of this calculation so the yellow is the buffer impact area that's part of this exception that's my understanding I may be wrong in my in my my we're, we're approving the impact, the impact, and the buffer impact. We're approving two things, right? Right. The yeah. Wetland impact. Of so that yellow nine. space, we're improving. We're approving that also. Right. Whether they put a driveway or not, we're still in approving it. That's what I'm saying. At that point, I don't know what a driveway does to the. I don't see how a driveway changes the outcome. Yeah. So, so how does that lot 21 um, wetland buffer impact 
How is that impacted in this discussion? There's a driveway that goes through it. <laughs> <laughs> on the, on so, the left-hand side, to the left top, it goes off to the side. Right. It didn't, it didn't so, so in fact, the driveway is part of the buffer impact that we are yeah. approving. It, and the impact's already there no matter what, whether there's a lot there or not, there's still impact. Is that true? It's true. Yeah. 100%. That's what I'm saying. I, I think we're in, a, we're in a quandary. If we're going to yeah. have this discussion, the driveway, again, we, wouldn't even, we shouldn't even been probably presented the driveways, but... I know the public here is close, but you may want to look at how you've described it. It does not include the driveways. I, yeah. The actual um, uh, the app application. The application does not include Yeah, because I didn't see the application here, so I... I yeah, it's in it's yeah. somewhere in there. So if you're, if you're deciding what is applied for... It's the crossing we're approving. We're not including... I think the buffer impact is really going to be up to the planning board to decide whether they can even build another lot or not. Because mm -hmm. I don't typically oh, yeah. vote on buffer impact at the planning board, do they? Because it's a yeah. isn't that a ZBA I, thing? No, I think. Me too. I'm sorry. Does the planning board vote on buffer impact? No. No. No, that does. That's what I no, thought. No, we we right. we decide whether they can have a variance, but that impact's still there for the crossing line anyway. I don't know how we can. If we accept the, the crossing and the, the buffer impact, they get the variance. I, we can't declare whether they can build on it or not. So there's a hard road going over it anyway. Right. Understood. Right. I mean, I'm I'm confused by. Uh, we've never gotten to this conversation where we had a, a crossing where we now debated over the lot can be used because the lot is also incurred in the, in the buffer. Not that I've had a conversation in the past. And I suspect there's been, well, there's been driveways going over buffer impacts in the past, but was showing that was part of the exception because it was doing a crossing also. But there's no wetland crossing. It's just an impact to the buffer zone. So I'm going back to our legal mind over there and let's help you out here. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking. Well, Go ahead, I'm just going to offer, I mean, what they're showing is the road and the right. culverts. I mean, if we're not showing the driveways, we can't evaluate whether driveways are disturbing buffers or not. Yeah, unfortunately, page. So again, the buffer is again as defined, you know, to be uh, undisturbed, naturally vegetated upland habitat. So if they're going to put a driveway through a buffer afterwards, that we're not aware of right now, it's not being shown on this application. But it is being. Well, it's in, it's in the, it's it's in the exhibits, separately. right? Again, so I don't know right now. Well, we don't even know if that's where the planning board will say the driveway can go. I mean, that's in a day the planning board should define which way the driveway goes. I would assume. But most of these will come out in um, building permits. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's typically when I'm going to see them. But again, they can be worked with on the planning side. So where is, oh, wait, uh, yeah, it goes right through the buffer zone. Okay. I'm looking at this drive and trying to figure where the, Delineation of the buffer zone is so that driveway, the top of the driveway does go to the buffer on lot 21. Lot 21, yes, yeah. okay. Right. And then lot, lot nine, which became another topic of the day, that driveway is not in the buffer, right? Yeah, I didn't think it was right. So 21, and I specifically asked this, that driveway is right through. The buffer. It, it it's at the t right. It's going right through. Just so it's it's meeting up with the road right through the same impact. And I mean our um, regulations. We say you're not supposed to have any parking or storage or motor vehicles or other petroleum power equipment, including but not limited to boats, cars, trucks. That's prohibited activities in the buffer. Right. So if I'm going to approve this impact, they're already disturbing the buffer. I'm not going to allow any additional buffers. I mean, there is no additional bell for impact, though. If you're going to put a driveway, to, for me, it's important that I make sure that it's clear that this but is being approved. the same impact, the road is the road is allowed. The driveway, this is a pass-through area for the hot driveway. No cars are parked on top of the driveway. For lot the 21, yeah. in my opinion, there should not be a driveway. Okay. So lot 21 is non-usable by your definition, period. I'm not saying it's not usable. Yeah, I'm saying there's no way to get a driveway in. Yeah, but again, we're not looking at the lots. They can reconfigure right. the lots. I'm saying that's if right. I'm going I don't even think you should be considering the driveway based on what that's, you want to say. That's what I think Well, I'm considering it because they put it on their plan. So I'm considering if we're going to impact the buffer. More, more, more information is not always helpful, I guess. That could be. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with the impact part. I understand the concern. I, I tend to agree with it, but I think that's really a planning right. board's decision, not ours. 
Because we're going to approve the buffer impact anyway, and if the buffer impact means there's a hard surface going over it, there's a hard surface going over it. The road has a hard surface in it too. For the crossing for the road is what we're looking at. But the buffer impact is part of the calculation of that hard surface. So I, I mean, I suspected that the reason why it swung out so far. Well, it's, a, it's an impact because they're doing grading or whatever it is. You know, so they're the moving road. earth and doing yeah. that to construct the road. So that impact will be restored in theory, that buffer impact. Yeah. So if it's restored, I don't want it being touched again with the driver. Okay. But no, you had a question about the culvert sizes and what culverts, right? Yeah, I did ask about whether or not there were any determination on open bottom or not. Right, open bottom or not. From from my uh, limited experience with culverts, uh, the open bottom was was preferred, but that was probably years ago, and I have no idea if that's still the truth. Well, there was a discussion during conservation about open versus not, and I think. Right. Fish and Game doesn't want an open bottom because of some predator type thing that really? happens. Yeah. Right. And I think that's why they're waiting for Fish and Game to kind of give a termination, open bottom or not, okay. so they go back. So that's, I think it's being that's defined by Fish and Game. Yeah. So do we want to make, if we were to approve that, to make it a condition that the fish culvert and game will be constructed per the recommendations fish of and game. Fish and Game? Yep. Yeah, I would do yeah, that. Yeah, that would be good. Yep. I know that, again, the pump was closed, but I think I can clarify your <coughs> concern, if I, if I may. The impact of the driveway does not enhance or exacerbate the impact on the bar. Is that correct? Correct. So with, without the driveway, the degree of impact on that buffer stays the same. That's all I wanted to point out. That, that that was my uh, that's my opinion also, but I'm not a oh, geologist. Yeah, sorry. I, since he was allowed to make a, a yep, go ahead and then if you would take a look at the impact of yellow on that plan, yep. if that amount of impact is part of the roadway, then there should be a yellow line as thick as that around every single area. So they have, uh, I think, the yellow line impact on 21 mm -hmm. is larger than the yellow line impact just across the street on Lot Nine. So I think they've included the driveway in their wetlands impact for 21. It's not just part of the road, because if it was part of the road, you would have a much larger yellow line going on each side of the road where it impacts. The yeah, road. that's my that was my assumption too. But right, so so it's not part of the road. They're including the driveway impact in that yellow. In that yellow, okay. okay. And that's what I was assuming too. I think that should be clear. All right, thank you. All right, we're gonna we're gonna close. I'm sorry. No, 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 I let you speak. Oh, it's not, it's speak. No, 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 no need to be sorry. All right, so we're back in our deliberations. Back in deliberation. Um, so the, one of the conditions we're talking about would be per recommendation of New Hampshire Fish and Game yep. for yep. the culverts. For the culverts. Do we have any other concerns? I Should we stipulate um, this approval, if we do approve, mm -hmm. would exclude any driveway buffer impact? Is that, would I, that be I, specific I, enough? I, 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 that's the only way I would yeah. consider voting for any type of... Uh, I mean, if you read special exceptions, A, it's streets, roads, bridges, and other access ways and utility right of easements. Uh, Where are you looking? I mean, where are you? Uh, Just that's the intent is what you're saying, Jeff, right? Article 1208, so special included. exceptions. Cool. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Page 68, maybe 67. Yeah, oh, well, and that's yeah. why I said yeah, that. Yeah, I think what George has pointed out is that that's whole buffer is That's the application is for a special exception for that. That is not talking about driveways or other. Right. So Jeff, you're saying that the driveways. Any other disturbances, so that can be handled. I just consider that separate. That's just, just saying the opposite of what you say. Oh, you're saying if you're issuing a special exception, it's specific to for the streets and roads. Right. This the application is okay. for this, mm -hmm. and therefore. So that means if they go back to the planning board and the planning board says, "Well, the driveway's going to impact," we they're going to have to come back here again asking for another exception for that driveway. That's I think that's what we're asking. Or some of us are, are thinking. But I also think I, based on the based on what again, we just heard too. If you're disturbing buffer, it's not a special exception at that point. What is it? If at that you point? want to put 
if you're if you're doing anything, whether it's a shed or if you're disturbing the buffer, it's it's going to be a variance. Yes. So if they it's want to put a driveway. Within 50 yeah, feet a variance. So they'll have, the have to come back for a variance. So it'd be, it'd it'd be something different, is what I'm saying. Right. So it's still a, still so, a right. CBA active. Right. So you're saying if they want to put a driveway, right, on lot 21, they would have to come back for a variance. In the buffer. In the buffer. Uh, yeah. I the, am saying we'd have to look at, at the lots and what they're trying to do. And right, but if they wanted to put a driveway, make, as they indicated in their paper that they presented to us tonight, that crosses right through that, that would require a variance. Potentially, yes. But, until I see, again, I, but noting, I wait till I see it and then I can But Jeff, going, going to the second, the second page of this exhibit here, the buffer's drawn out here. And it's it's going extra wide to capture the driveway impact. Right. So I think it's if we're proving the 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 wetland impact and the buffer impact is part of the variance, the calculation is already there. They already have their variance. And they're already going to have their exception, which includes that. I mean, right? So but it may not require up, one so. because it's already been disturbed at that point. Yeah. Okay. It's, you know, it's similar to the water line being run on, on Hillcrest. It's running alongside of, uh, of some buffer areas, but it's already running in the right of way that's already been disturbed. There's nothing, they're not required, they were not required to get one for exactly that reason. Okay. So, so I would say, you know, if you're trying, you're not going to be able to uh, specify each and every spot here, right? So. Until we get to that, I would not. Um, I mean, I wouldn't look at that to be included later on if I saw your decision. What was your last statement? Uh, I would not. I would not. Um, looking at anything after the fact, I would whether say whether it's driveways or anything else, to me is not. I don't see it as directly related to the special exception. Yeah, I was going to add it as so, also including. But the again, if it's already been disturbed buffer, then yeah. It's just a variant of that it, point. You know, right, right, I wouldn't be looking for one. So, but until this plan is finalized, yep. we're guessing, right? So I, I mean, I think these things could change, so. I think I'd be okay with just adding it as if lot 20, you know, something like if lot 21 is determined to be buildable and okay. it requires a driveway, they would have to come back for the variance. Right. I think that's. I don't know how, the, I don't know how you want to legally award it, but. I was just right, so putting one in question. Are we all in agreement that we don't want that impact to lot 21, proposed lot 21, that nobody wants to see a driveway through that? I think the majority of us feel that way, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, if that's the case, and my concern is where impact is enough to do what we're doing. Right. I don't want another impact on, pop, on, on top, top of, of the impact that we just have. Because then you get into all the, the water flow and all the information here that we already talked about. So I think impact upon, like a double whammy to that is not something that I would be in favor of. And I think that But you have to give them a path forward if, they, if the planning board agrees with them building there, they have to be able to come back here for a variance. If the planning board says the buffer impact was calculated, everything's been done the right way, then they need to be able to come back here with an open mind, with us having an open mind on all the variants. Plus, plus, if you have that in position, there's a 30 day window for request for a rehearing, and who knows, the plan board may continue into a couple more meetings. So then we're caught between a rock and a hard place where we get a time limit based on this decision uh, that the plan board doesn't have to deal with. Well, I think we're we're saying it's two separate decisions, right? It's our decision to allow the pat the the um, the crossings, but that if you do decide to do 21, as I hear us discussing, we're suggesting that that impact would require a driveway variance to allow the driveway to be constructed. So, if the planning board supports the construction of that lot that way, and that's what it requires, you have to come back for a separate hearing. That's did I say that right? So that's what I was thinking. Yeah. So it's not that you're requiring, not that the ZBA is requiring the variance, if the plan board requires it. So it's not a decision yes. now, it's, it's Right, because this, 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 this. That um, would get rid of the 30 day window. This lot configuration. Well, be careful of not going back out into the public, because I do a lot that's more true. speak. That's, that's true. Yeah, I think, 
Thank yeah. You. <laughs> I think yeah, we got we got to call, close it down now, but no. I think what we're saying is that we're going to identify law 21 as a concern. But it's going to be up to the planning board to decide how they're going to figure that out. We can't shut down 21 for them not to be able to come back for variance. I'm not. I would disagree with that. I think we can't just I think initially we said they can't build on 21 at all. It's too much impact. Mm -hmm. Right? No, I'm not saying they can't build on 21. They could reconfigure the lots however exactly. they see fit. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. Let I'm the, saying let I the, don't just don't want any further impact to that uh, already impacted. Right, but buffer. we're only, this is my concern. We're only, we don't know, we're, we're not supposed to know about the driveway. We don't know where it's going on. No, but we, we are know supposed to know. We can know about the driveway. Right? The driveway, right. I know, we, I know we know it's about there. it. The impact is showing, yeah. is including the driveway, and I think we, that I would agree. We're not arguing that at all. I just think yeah, we should say lot 21 is of concern due to a, due to driveway placement. We don't accept that it can't be built based on our, our, our if we approve is not does not approve the driveway and lot 20 is the impact. Yeah, again, I defer to Laura and how that could be worded. Yeah, I'm trying to position that. So what about something? <coughs> the condition that there is no further impact to the wetlands except for what was shown for the construction of the road. Um, I don't like that. The ZBA is opposed to the location of the driveway on lot 21. And if the applicant seeks to have the driveway for proposed lot 21 impact the wetland buffer, then a variance will be necessary. Yeah. It gives them the door to come back if they need to. I just want to make that crystal clear again. Not too Jeff, is there a, um, a future project where the road goes through all the way through? Is that what they're thinking about too? I see the cul-de-sac, but I see what it looks like as a throughway being below us too. Um, no. I'm not sure what you're right here. Right there. Oh, I can restore. It's just a general comment. If you want, I should have just put you for the butter. No. Okay. Thanks.
right? So we have the two conditions, right? Any other conditions that people are thinking about? So people feel comfortable moving forward with those two conditions? Mm -hmm. All right, so I will make a motion to grant the applicant's request for a special exception uh, for 1868 One Hale Road, Litchfield, New Hampshire, 18-62, 18-64, 37 Hollings Drive, I don't know what that says, Webster, that's not right, Webster, so, no, that's wrong. 18-68, uh, One Hale Way, Litchfield, New Hampshire, 1862, 1864. So, yeah, 62, 64, and 68, to grant the applicant's request for a special exception with the following conditions. One, the culverts will be construct constructed per the recommendation of New Hampshire Fish and Game, and Two, okay, now this one, the applicant will uh, adhere to the recommendations made by the Conservation Commission in its December 18th, 2023 letter. And three, um, the, that the only impact to the wetland and the wetland buffer is for construction, is for road construction, not to include any driveways, including the driveway for lot. 21, the ZBA is opposed to the location of the driveway on lot 21, and if the applicant seeks to have the driveway for the proposed lot 21 impact the wetland buffer, then a variance will be necessary. <coughs> I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Passes 4-0-0. Zero, zero. Thank you. Second that method. Yes, I did. Right? So that was Laura. Zero, zero. All right. And the next thing we have is case number 1218-2023-2, a variance from LZO Article 310 to construct a two-family dwelling with less than 200 feet of frontage and a minimum of 1.5 acres of continuous dry lot and Article 40201 to construct a two-family dwelling with less than 0 0.8 acres, unencumbered by floodplain building setbacks and any easements within the residential district. Name of applicant is Junior D. Oliveira, owner of property ILX Enterprises, LLC. Location of the property, 25 Quatlin Ave, Litchfield, New Hampshire, map 22, lot 80. And who will be presenting? Evening again, it's Junior Oliveira. Here is um, Monique Rice. Should we read the obligation? Uh, if you want to just tell us what you're trying to do and then go through the five points, that All would right. be great. So we're trying to build a two family and it's a um, piece of land we purchased. We're gonna start off with, um, just with our opening. Um, here's Monique, here's Junior. We're, um, this is gonna be a homeowner occupying uh, residence. We're not doing this for business. We're gonna live in this place, um, and we're looking, seeking for the best interest of the community, obviously, and our best interest. Um, we're seeking a variance for sections 310 and 502.01, which is um, multifamily requires 200 feet, 200 feet of frontage minimum and 1.5 acres uh, total area, and the minimum continuous area that un unencumbered uh, should be eight acres at this point our property falls within those um, requirements actually we don't have any frontage it's uh, the end of the cul-de-sac uh, our land area is 1.142 acres it's less than 1.5 required and um, our unencumbered area it's 0.65 acres as opposed to 0.8 required so these are the three variants we seek in here and um, I'm gonna go through the five points so the point one is the variance is not going to be contrary to the public interest 
Okay, so granting this variance for a two-family building will not alter the essential car character of the neighborhood or result in the detrimental increase in town services, fire, police, and rural maintenance. Um, the proposed structure is positioned in the same location as the former house. So for those who don't know, this was a condemned building that we purchased and one of the requirements was to tear down the structure and remove it. And this is what's been done. Um, the proposed structure is approximately 93 feet from the roadway, um, which is the end of the cul-de-sac and has no frontage. Therefore, it doesn't alter the essence of the neighborhood. Town services would remain unchanged as this is an existing property without substantial modification. So the first point is we are putting a house where a house was. On top of that, we're adding a second house, which would be um, an apartment pretty much. Uh, regardless of the variance, uh, we're still gonna try to go for, in case we don't get the variance, we're still gonna try to go for um, an ADU. So, there will be people, other people living there other than us, no matter what. So basic, basically, this is not gonna change. Granting the variance is not gonna be against the public interest on that uh, point. Number two, the spirit of the ordinance is observed because um, the property will not be unique in comparison to adjacent properties. Um, the variance preserves frontage in total as similar to surrounding properties which less frontage in the area. I guess it's just a typo about the frontage, but the area. There are houses on, there's immediate abutters with uh, ADUs, there's um, multifamilies in the same neighborhood, there's a whole condo with 66 properties being built less than a half mile away. Uh, number three, substantial justice is done because there's no gain to the public by denying the variance. Substantial improvements would, were required of the property, including substantial enforcing conditions re resulting in increased property cost. Without this variance, much of the effort and initial investment of this property would be a result in a substantial loss. So again, this is a couple going after the dream. This is not a company trying to make money. We uh, budget this place and um, the structure and in a certain amount of money and we ended up spending much more than we did. I mean, obviously, it's nothing to do with the town. It's not your fault. And again, it's not gonna be against the public interest. Uh, number four, the values of surrounding properties are not di diminished because removal of the existing building was in the public best interest. So the place was really uh, unkept the house was abandoned for at least a couple of years and it was um, actually being used by kids and other people trespassing, doing who knows what in the property. So we took care of it. Um, development of the property will increase the value of the neighborhood properties and surrounding area. This variance is harmonious with surrounding properties, including but not, but not limited to home business with commercial equipment, homes with accessory dwell, dwelling units, development of corny farm at River Edge with 66 condos, like uh, in proximity of urban living, which is Manchester. Uh, literal enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance would result in a necessary hardship. So the property has a unique location. It's at the end of the cul-de-sac, having no frontage to any neighbor nor public right away. There's um, pretty much 100, and I said unlimited on the application, but it's 195 foot frontage to the woods abutting the property. So the common use of the woods, which is a trail and whatnot, will satisfy a necessity for ample area for yards and gardens, which is the section 502.1 along with the minimum unencumbered area requirement. Um, number uh, Letter B, so to fully use the unique conditions of the land, the variance should be granted, allowing the residents of two families maximize the use of land in abutting woods. The families will not feel trapped or cramped considering the unlimited access to the trail and woods. Questions for the applicant. So the variant you're seeking is frontage and contiguous land? Uncumbered land. Yeah, what does that mean? 
So after you deduct the setbacks necessary to build the house, whatever is the net area okay. left out. So um, on that point, since we don't have frontage, we are required to have 50 foot setback from the right of way off the right of way. So since you don't have frontage because you have an easement, a 60 foot easement, so on my, my view is that that would surface the 50 foot and that would also increase the unencumbered area because you eliminate that 50 foot frontage requirements. You don't have frontage, so there's no need to have a setback once you don't have frontage. What is the size of your lot? It's 1.14 acre. 1.14, right? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how many um, multifamily homes are in your general neighborhood? Um, there's an adjacent ADU, um, which is the corresponding property right outside of our property. And um, there's a commercial um, property, I would say, right on the uh, abutting side. And then we're closer to the Manchester line. Um, so where is it's like more urban living adjacent um, ADU what's that I'm, sh I'm not sure about um an adjacent property so like um the it's, it's a new law a apartment it's a new law yeah. apartment within those oh, single sorry. family yeah. house I wasn't sure what an ADU an was sorry about that yeah accessory dwelling <coughs> yeah <coughs> yeah okay thank you I'm sorry so you know, I, yeah, I, <laughs> as far as the multifamily there is like the Stonehenge apartments across Corning on Woodland Drive which is like pretty much six condos and um, down according those 66 condos being built now it basically is um you know it's um, not like um, some parts of Litfield where it's more rural um, it's more the Manchester side or the um, it's the zoning as far as the multi family overlay Land. district is what it's called okay Thank I you. guess deemed or zoned yeah that's the plans that you guys have in hands is like very preliminary and it's gonna get changed obviously but basically what you can see where the property is gonna be placed the the plot plan that's final now access to your property there's an access easement on the lot next door to you yeah so is that that's how you're getting in and out of your property right is through an access easement over your neighbor's property correct I'm not quite sure if your neighbor understands that they have an access easement. Because when you look at your neighbor's property, the house is positioned here, yeah. and then you have the woods over here, but they, you actually are using your driveway goes over the front yeah, portion of the property. Yeah, it's a permanent access easement granted right. on yeah, the without, property that's deeded. Without that would be landlocked. We couldn't. Right. Yeah. Did the neighbor send the letter because he was supposed to? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I haven't received yeah. anything from that. So I don't know if that's on here, but this is so this is their house. Oh, that's much better. And yeah. this is an access easement. So here's the end of the cul-de-sac here. Uh, so they can't. So they actually don't touch the cul-de-sac. No, the property doesn't. Yeah. They have to cross over the front of their neighbor's right. property to get to access. So there's no. So there's no frontage. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there is no frontage. Yeah. Well, in this plan it talks about a future street. Right. It, and that's why I had Jeff pull it, some of the plans so we could kind of get a better handle on gotcha. what was happening as far as frontage. So is that considered the paper street? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not sure. what, I challenge you to put a street there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, no, what portion of it? Right, I... Yeah. Um, uh, I had to bring it up. Yeah. yeah. So... There's yeah, various versions, I, you know, right? I guess uh, I would say this might be the best. Accessing. You know, approved by planning board. <laughs> I just can't tie everything yeah. together. So looking at the plans, mm -hmm. your proposed, so dwelling two is the original footprint of the original home that was there. Correct. Right? And so dwelling one is the add-on, but it looks like it's a car under and then the, the living space is above right yeah yep. it's a three car That's garage with the apartment on top okay so the idea is that the, the one car garage will be used by the the party above right exactly okay so what's the square footage for an adu i'm just trying to figure out how what's, what defines an adu versus a multifamily in that sense uh, it's a maximum of 800 square feet but there's more requirements than of an atu than just the square footage well right. i know there's a i think there's a the relationship requirement of the video relationship, common door, common area. Yeah. 
um, access. Okay. Do more. <laughs> Those are the no, usual two. Right. I didn't realize a common door was required on ADU. You didn't realize what? A common door was required. Well, but but ADU? It's yeah. like a common space entry, it's, right? Yeah. Like it's an internal you have door. To yeah. Okay, so a, a door is, is the a basic common door is the, the basic requirement to not have that. Um, have detach. We allow you, detach you, now by conditional use permit. Right. Yeah, but I just I'm kind of because they talk about this being multifamily. I'm just trying to understand because I think in your opening statement too there would be if this doesn't happen there's an ADU that's going to happen. So the question is what's the delta difference, right? The ADU oh. I, I I figured the ADU was a size restriction, but also no one. It can't be rented to nobody. It has to be, rented. It has to be yeah. lived in by a route group relative, basically. And that, that's the other thing. Right. Right. With the ADU, I can't just rent it. You right. know, it has to be like either somebody relative or, you know. Someone in the family, yeah. yeah. Someone in the bloodline. But yeah. be aware that a two family, you could put an ADU on. In addition to the two family, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So it's not just, right. Yep. No, I figured that. Yeah. Thank you. I'm reading ahead. Any other questions for the applicant? So, not for the applicant. I think it's more probably for Jeff to help me understand exactly what we're actually yeah. approving or, or we're discussing, I guess. So, because there's no frontage, right? That changes the way they calculate the the, the billable area or the whatever the frontage. Well, well, one right. So, one requirement is for 200 feet of frontage. Mm -hmm. So before we, I just want to, I, has a determination been made if there's frontage or not? Because when I look at different things, different Well, plans, there's no road frontage because there's no road. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if there's right. a paper street, there's still frontage. So we're saying that you're making a determination as a building official that it, there is no paper road. So this law has no, you can still have frontage on a paper road. So. My question right. is, it's, which would still be less than the 200. I know, but right. my, but my exactly. question is, I don't want to say there's no frontage when there potentially could be frontage because earlier plans show a road, a road through, go right. through there, and I have other plans that show there's a road that's showing there's frontage. So I think before we move forward, I think if we don't know, we need to know, or we should know, if there is frontage, and if there is frontage, the frontage would be 195. I say it's 195, so they're five feet short of what they require for frontage. So the, but if there was frontage, you would have that on his deed, right? Mm -hmm. No. Would be needed. No. No, I don't think no, they you, would. They're not going to put what I'm, the road frontage is. Right. But the, the question is, we have previous plans that show the road going through to Spring right. Street, right? Right. Which would, in turn, say that there's 190 feet free to frontage. Now, the town never developed that, so the classification of that road is going to be different, but it still has road frontage. Can you say again, where's that road supposed to go to? It went to what's called Spring Street on a, like, 1966 plan. Oh. But that was Wait. never constructed. Oh, so what's ever on this side of the development was never constructed. Well, so going like, here's the cul-de-sac, if yeah. you were to go straight, yeah. it went back in 1966, this was a different street name, it was Spring Street. Oh, okay, so there's a street on that side, all right. I but that's you. gone now. The street's gone? Spring Street's gone, right. It was never there. It was never oh, there. It was, yeah. it, was, it was proposed, but never built, neither. But it never came to. So when they street. developed this area, they proposed the street to be there, and it's never going to go. So what's there now, just open open space? Not a, lot. Not a lot. Can you pull it up on the thing? The so Cortland Ave basically ends before their lot. Cortland Ave ends in a cul-de-sac right, right. here. But in paper, we, like when you say, but the paper street goes to, to here, right, to the end of their lot. Okay. Is my understanding. So. <coughs> when I moved to town, I was going to buy a house on Cortland. Yep. Yeah, you can see it all the way down. Yep. If you keep, yeah, right there, that's the cul-de-sac. But that road, I mean, it went further on 1966 plans. Gotcha. But now there's a, it looks like a construction company behind it. Right. That's um, um, Continental Paving. Oh, okay. Uh, they're sand and gravel. 
That's sand and gravel that's off? Um, this right here? I think. No. No, that's not. No. Yeah. That's off of Acadian oh. Way. That's the Abutter 26 oh. Acadian. Yeah, never mind. Sorry. Sand and gravel's right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There. Yep. That you can't miss. Yep, <laughs> that you can't miss. Hmm. A little quandary. Yes. So, um, any more questions for the applicant? Because I'll get some public input and then we can go back. All right. So I'm going to open it up for public input. Is there anybody in the audience in favor of the application? There's no way. But where it? Uh, I'm confused. Yep. Where, so right where there is the cul-de-sac, yeah. Mr. Charbonneau, and then if you go over. The other up the other side, the arrow. Put, John, if you put the arrow on the other side, kind of like seven o'clock. Uh, that that's the house lot. Right here. So is it the house at the town? The lot. That's the one. Yes. Yep. Okay. We just sold. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The house is yep. below the, that. right there. Yeah, not that one. So it's the one oh, next to it. No, that, that that's the neighbors. That's it, right there. Oh. Yep. So I have that. So. Oh, right here in yep. the trees. Yep. Okay, gotcha. Um, yeah, you can see like their access to the cul-de-sac comes okay. through where the trees aren't as dense. Yeah, gotcha. But that house is gone because they had to tear that down. Because right. They can the house. No, I remember the condition of the house. Right. I remember the, yeah, I got it. Okay. All right, so I asked anybody in favor. Is there anybody in opposition? And anybody with questions? Uh, anything else you'd like to add before we close public input? Um, this is it. Okay. Let's make, it, let it make a motion to close public input. Second. Uh, second that? Second. Oh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. <sighs> so, now for them to build, because it's, don't they need a special permit because it, it's on a class? I don't have a statue in front of me, class six road. So they're going to need a permit from the uh, like Board of Selectmen and stuff because they have no frontage on a class five they road have or better. Easement access. It doesn't matter. So, no, as far as. Does this have to procedurally go? To, this got to go to planning board too, right? No. No. Mm -hmm. Sorry, well-defined lot. Just they can, it's a well-defined no, lot. but I think it needs already. to go. I'll yeah. tell you in a second. There's already a house on it, so. Gotcha. Okay. Other than the setbacks, there's nothing precluding it to be a multifamily. There's nothing in the ordinance other than the setback issues, right? Well, this is. Oh, it's not a multifamily. It's a two-family. Two family. Two family, not a multi family. Two two family. Multi family would be three or more. So two family. But if they're gonna need permission to uh build because we have six seventy four forty one, um that no building shall be erected on any lot within any municipality, nor shall a building permit be issued for the erection of a building unless the street given access to the lot upon which such building is is proposed to be placed shall be have been accepted or open as a class five better beforehand so they have another avenue to go through you just can't issue them a building permit they have a they have a they have a driveway easement already I'm gonna pull up that easement yeah there's a wire in there that's 674 but that's assuming there's no easement though there's already an easement granted to that property it says no building permit shall be erected on any lot with any part of the municipality, nor shall a building permit be issued for the erection of a building unless the street giving access to the lot upon which building is proposed to be placed shall, and then it goes through. Well, That's not my determination. I'm just putting yeah. forward the as a statute. Cortland is the street that they have access to. But it has to be a class five or better. That's not maintained. Cor no, Cortland's Cor maintained. That's where, they, that's where the reason goes. to a certain point. Uh, There's the, they are not getting access from their frontage onto the class five road. 
But then the is on court. No, it's not. I know. That's what I'm saying. So there's another avenue. That's not my jurisdiction, but I'm putting it out there so they're not thrown, you know, they don't understand. 674 is going to come into, should come into play for them to be able to build on this property if the variance is granted. So basically what you're saying is that this house, this house has no frontage no on the frontage. class 5 road or better. Uh, excuse me. Uh, the easement says, the easement says that, um, it is meaning and intending to describe and convey a right of way contained within the real estate of the grantor hearing acquired by the grantor hearing under the deed of jo Joseph uh, Cazillo dated September blah blah blah. Uh, the above and foreground premises are hereby conveyed to the grantee for purpose of construction, maintaining, and operating a right of way, driveway, and means of ingress and egress to order in a budding property of the grantee hearing. So that means it is intended to be a right of way. No, but it's not a, it's, it's not a class five road or better. It's a right away. It's different, and that's again that's not within the jurisdiction of this board. Mm -hmm. But that's something that the town will have to consider on its own accord. But that's so this driveway doesn't connect to the cul-de-sac. I think it does. Again, I can't. The trees in the way. I can't really tell. Well, where's my other thing? I'll show you. It does here. This is the plan. So it does go to the cul-de-sac. Oh. Jeff, how long does uh, how long did the road the extend right before the access easement? It gets to their lot. Their way to get to oh, the okay. So they're using so the so other. This is this is the, the cul de sac. That is the cul de sac. And this, this is this is the easement here, which is on. So there's already so there's property line. In the first place this is the easement, easement on okay, the abutting property. property. And this is where, where's their property right here? Yes. 1966. Right. <laughs> right, right around there. So. So yeah, driveway comes off here. Right here. Yeah. Here's, the, here's their lot. Here's the yeah. access. Okay. I assume that it's just yeah, they're going to need additional approval from the town. right there to get out there. So okay. does that preclude us from even hearing this case? Start here. No, but it should, it, for me, it goes into some of the safety concerns, or one and two of the criteria. Okay. Right. So we, we're in would, deliberations, it, right? But would it make better sense for them to go in front of the board and ask permission first, because if they say no, that's, they're dead in the water anyway, based on what yeah. you're saying. That's not for us to, I mean, it's a chicken or the egg, which one you want to do first. But that, what I don't know is what we're, what we're even accepting, what we're we trying to do a variance for. Is it the frontage or is it it's this? Both. It's frontage and the land area. Well, there is no frontage, so I don't, personally, I don't, I think this is unique. Uh, there's a good reason why there's not frontage, so I don't, I don't, I don't see an issue with granting a variance for that one. It's the, it's the total space I think that's a problem, for two, two family. Place. Well, it's, it says it wasn't a two family place there before, right? No, it was not. It's a one, but it, multi family is there a different requirement for two family? Two you families, two right? The two hundred feet. Oh, it's the same same as multifamily. Okay, so two hundred feet, feet and a minimum of one and a half acres. That's that's. I so think we're that's really the problem of this. Yeah, but I think not so much the frontage, because it's unique. There's absolutely unique aspect to this this lot. Yes. Yeah, because I would wonder because also when they're doing a two family, that requires a whole different septic design, and is there enough property to do a septic design on that property? We would go through that process, yeah. And is that why we have the requirement for the contiguous land areas for septic I would concerns? assume so, because you have to design two, right? No, the contiguous is um, in order to have enough land for everything, for septic, for garage, for shed, right. that, you know, all the, all the rest of the accessories. And that street area is residential, single family. It is. It's right on the, the board. Right. But, but it's, the street yeah. is single family. Right. right. So, anybody have any thoughts, concerns? And my my <coughs> with the lot size, not so much the frontage. Yeah, because we're we're quite off the size <coughs> for the minimum. We're way off for a multi for a two family multifamily. Then there's no size limitation on an ADU though. There's no there's no acreage requirement on the ADU or is there? No. No. 
So it needs to be built on the back of the house and now how big the property is. I, I, could, I mean, I do have concerns with the lack of frontage from a safety point of view for emergency vehicles getting in. Now you're increasing, going from one family to two with potential for ADUs with uh, no road frontage. I mean, no way for emergency vehicles to get in there. I mean, they can go the way they're going, but there's not the road frontage. So I do have some concerns with that. Does fire and police have to weigh in on this too when, they, when you go for the building permit? No, not even for multifamily? If, I, if there was a length of driveway issue, it's something that uh, just requires a turnaround type of thing. So, I mean, if there's something else like that, I would consult with fire. Fire truck had been there, and so long ago. Right. <laughs> we all know so, why. Yeah. The planning board will look at this too. So. And they'll have to sign like a municipal liability like, to waive that. So this stuff that needs to be. That's your driver right there, right? Mm-hmm. It's yeah. an RSA. Yeah. Six seventy four forty one. Another, one, yeah, another they, dirt driveway. Typically, they'll sign what's called a waiver of municipal liability, um, so saying because the police and fire can't get to you. It has two driveways. It has like a wraparound, and then it and has um, so. that second driveway there. Okay, so that's not their primary driveway. So this is your driveway right here. Correct. Right. And like, if you turn, go to the the neighbors. Yep, it is going. right here. Yep. It, yep, it keep looks going. like it's a continuation of the of the circle. That looks like that. That's not paved. That's just dirt, right? That's right. Yeah, so it's dirt, dirt edge. Right, but if you go and now face that, that front house, like if you look at... Uh, this is the one right next door. Right, that's where the access easement is granted from. Right, like, so access, it's right here. That's right. the it's access. Down. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. and then there's the house across the street. Right. Or whatever they would call yeah, it. Yeah, adjacent. Okay. okay. So, I have concerns. That's just me. I mean, it sounds like it's not going to go forward if the concerns are that heavy. You have the same concerns about the size of the lot, at least. Size of the lot, yeah. Yeah, frontage was not the concern. The lot size is a concern. Do um, you want to go through the five points and see where we fall? Okay. Yeah? Yep. All right, so we're going to do the 310, the dimensional requirements first. Good. Yeah, I think it falls on, on question two, but right. I agree. I that's, that's the only thing. I mean, everything else is subjective, but item two is we have a zoning we have a zoning ordinance that says minimum size lot for a reason for two family or higher. That's where it falls. If it was a you know a, a tenth of an acre off or something like that, that would be definitely close, a yeah. different decision. But I think that's where it falls. I would agree. That for, that's, well, that's we're doing the frontage one first. Okay. Um, I, I don't have a problem with the furniture, to be honest yeah, with you. <laughs> if we assume that's a, that's a paper road and it's, that's where the furniture is 109 feet, I would say it's okay, but the size of the lot's where the problem is. I do have concerns, Al. I do. You have concerns with frontage? No, just because I, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking that paper road was designed to go with the correct frontage. So my concern is that it is a paper road and the ability for fire, emergency personnel, all that fun stuff that one and two talk about is my concern. But if nobody else agrees, then we'll just go through. Yeah, the paper road part, the, the French part doesn't bother me. The access doesn't bother me because we have plenty of driveways that are like that. Okay. That fire goes up and down all the time. So yeah. I'm not overly concerned of that, okay. but I think I go back to the number two is where my concern is. If for, the, for, the, for the size of the lot, right. right. So let's do one first, because okay. it seems like the field of board is to grant the variance for the lack Front of funding. Right. All right, so. Well, doesn't one, one or the other cancel each other out anyway at this point? The ask is for the multifamily, whether we approve one or both, it doesn't. they can't move forward no matter what. So, so I would deny it. I, I, I don't know. I think I would just deny the whole thing with them and go back and kind of re rejigger it, refigure it out. But 
I would go. You would. I wouldn't think we would approve one without approving the other, because it's just, they cancel each other out at that point. They can't do it. The variance is so being why asked don't we, to go to multifamily. We can do the second one first. That assumes that there's consensus that's going to be denied, and then we can open it back up and ask them if they want to move forward with the first one, or they could withdraw it so they don't have a denial. Gotcha. This gives them an option to go do something and come back again at that point. Okay, so let's good. go to the request for 50201. Yeah. All right, so the variance will not be con now one and two go hand in hand. So typically, if uh, you think two isn't met, one isn't met. So one and two are you know, really intertwined to a significant degree. Um, so the variance would not be contrary to the public interest because in the spirit of the ordinance is observed because thoughts on that yeah that's that's where I have issues with um, granting a variance because I don't think their their lot size um, is falls in line with the spirit of the ordinance well, yeah, they, they, and, the, and, the, and number two is his, the commentary is really around the French, but it's really the lot size that's the factor here. Um, the spirit of the audience was to be able to say, to maintain a typical size for multifamily, and this is well under that. And a larger size. So the, the spirit is to maintain a larger size right. for a two family. Correct. For a two family. Yeah. And that's going to go back into the character of the neighborhood, which is one, the same thing. So the character neighbor for one family, or for two families, require a larger lot size. So that would change the character. Right. I have less um, issues with one because there are um, there are examples of multi families in the general neighborhood, not in the, the yeah, immediate neighborhood, but right. the general neighborhood. Right, but the surrounding area right. is where we're at. But two, two is, is my issue. All right, so we got oh, note a one, uh, note a number one, note to number two for the spirit. Um, substantial justice is done because there is no gain to the public. I would say that they would fail on, on three because the gain to the public is keeping the lot size intact. Yep. And that's why. I see that. Looks like a lot next to it. it's considerably larger. Four, the values of surrounding properties are not diminished. Well, I think if we're saying the lot size needs to be a certain way, that it would diminish the value of surrounding properties if you're allowing the two family on it. I think it kind of all flows from the same reasoning. Yes, no? I'm not, I'm not sure that that would be the case. I don't have as much issue with four. Uh, John, I, I don't have issues with Ford either, but I like don't. I said it. You don't. Okay, so. I'm hung up on two, so that's All right, my. So up. we have one and two, uh, four, five. Uh, the uniqueness of the property would result in unnecessary hardship. I, I don't see the hardship. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, the investment part is not a hardship that we have to consult or consider. I guess. So they don't need five either. Right. Yeah. So there's. Nothing unique that would require us to not apply the ordinance as it's written. And the proposed use is a reasonable one. Or is it reasonable to put a two family on a lot? No. All right, so it looks like the consensus of the board is to deny that for the reasons we just gave. So if some, do I, I can make that motion or does somebody want to make the motion? I'm not sure how to, to okay. word that motion. Yep. 
I can do it. All right, so I will make a motion in case number 1218-2023-2 to deny the applicant's request for a variance to 50201 for the reasons just discussed. Okay, As well. second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So that variance request was denied. So you have another variance request in front of us. Do you want to proceed forward with that or would you like to withdraw that? So the one or two? Uh, you had the two variances, right, Jeff? Which one was denied? The one denied was a 502.01, the envelope for the building area. Okay. So we're saying that you can't have um, that, in, in essence, say that we're not allowing you to have a multifamily. Well, so. Say, in, that, in essence, we already de we declined yeah, it on three ten two because it's less than an yeah. acre and a half. So the reality is, we denied both. You did deny both. I know we kind of focused on one, but I think we're out to ultimately denying both because. Well, we didn't make a, a motion to deny both, so we can go forward and deliberate and deny both, or they can withdraw. It. All right, I'm withdrawing this point. Okay. Yeah, come back. The, the variance, difference. the request for a variance to section 310 has been denied. I mean, has been withdrawn. All right. All right. So we are moving to, uh, we have a motion for a rehearing. Uh, Case number 918-2021-1, 918-2023-2. That's continued from the November 23rd meeting. And let me just put this away here. I don't see the applicants here. This is a request for a rehearing, so this is not... This is just when the board deliberates. Whether we accept and do it. Whether okay. we want to move forward with yeah. the rehearing or not. So. Did you get this? Isn't it normal for the applicants to be here too? Yeah, they don't have to be. Okay. All right. So, Jeff, I'm going to ask you if you wouldn't mind just going through the procedural history of what happened, just to refresh the board's. Uh, memory of who the applicants were, what happened? Because I think some of this, I think there's a planning board application pending for this as well. Yes, there is. Uh, do you have that information right there? Because I do not have it. I have, I have the request for a rehearing. Yeah. So basically we have two requests for a rehearing and I wasn't present for when these two cases were heard back in September. So it's my understanding that the people who live at 446 Charles Bancroft Highway and 442 Charles Bancroft Highway came in front of the zoning board for a variance to allow parking, right? Correct. In a residential district? Yep. yep. Uh, no, commercial. commercial. To allow parking in a commercial district. In a commercial, di yes. this, Not a commercial uh, district, yep. Is this the spooky old parking? No, this is... Um, on the on those two properties at 442 and 446. So the for the world. off site parking. Oh, yeah, 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 world yeah. events only. Right. right. So they're commercial properties that have a home on it. One is strictly residential. Okay. The other one is uh, mixed. Okay. So they came in front of the board for a variance to allow parking, and that was granted. Correct. Right. It was granted with a lot with support from Mel's Correct. staff. Okay. And the conditions were basically written in a way that if Mel's did not allow them to access their property the way they with if if the access was not being allowed on the Mel's property without you know basically getting not being on Charles Bancroft mm -hmm. being pedestrian traffic, in my opinion it's shut down. Okay. So if Mel's is withdrawing their support, there's no case to hear they can't operate. Okay. Because one of the stipulations was there is no pedestrian traffic on Charles, Charles Bancroft Bank. Highway only. You can watch the meeting. It was all about they all agreed they were going to work together and they were going to allow access into the back half of the lot to exactly. get into the club. Without if Mel's is withdrawing that support, then the stipulation says they can't do it. Now, we have, we have to go shut it down if they try to do it next year. Mm -hmm. But again, if Mel's writes a letter to us, say, the town, the building inspector, and says, 
they're no longer allowing them to have access to the property, in my opinion, the variance is invalid, is invalid at that point. Were you here with this case? I think yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, were you they here were. for this? Yeah. yeah. I can get you the YouTube video if you want to watch it. What's that? I can get you the link to the YouTube video if you want to watch it. Um, so we have that. <coughs> yeah, is there a planning board application pending for? Yes, there is a planning board application pending. And do you know where that is in the process? Uh, they have uh, postponed it okay. with, until uh, DBA makes a decision. Um, I personally would like to review it in more detail because I was not here. Okay. Um, I wasn't either. Do you feel like you're in a position to? Cool. Okay. So. Shall we continue this one to next meeting? Are well, are we continuing the, the motion to rehear it or the motion to actually decide whether to rehear it? Because I would suggest if you guys. No, we did to decide to rehear it. Only thing that's pending is a motion to rehear the case. I want to. Uh, Look at some of the tapes and go back because I wasn't here originally. Yeah. I was going to suggest let's not make a decision right here. But, but that's I, I suggest Al and yourself watch right. the video. That's, yep. And that's what we're talking and about. And read the decision. The decision was very clear. I mean, okay. and Mel's, the management of Mel's, the owners of Mel's came up and said they will work together. They'll make this happen. It'll all be good. I don't know what transpired. I don't care what transpired. But the, the variance was very stip was stipulated that only the 22 days they were open. And they, they had to have no pedestrian traffic on Charles Parent Crawford. If Mel's is not allowing their access to their property for whatever reason, they can't rob, they can't operate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we would we would delay the decision to whether we we're going to gonna rehear it or not until next, next month's meeting. meeting. Yeah. Is, uh, well, I I'm I not in a position. Work. I, I think that's fair. I, I think that's you should. Decision. I think oh, you oh, should, oh, should oh, see oh, the oh, meeting. Okay. So you have two members that. Need more time. Exactly. I, I totally that. agree. Okay. I'm agree. So somebody, somebody. I beg well, that well, before we do that, <laughs> we have our next meeting date is a holiday. Correct. So yeah. let's so just that figure that. Day? Uh, so let's just the next meeting date is uh, January fifteenth, yeah. and town hall is closed that day. Correct. So you're not working, right? There won't be anybody working that right. day here. Yes. So. Is we won't have it. We could have the meeting the 16th. Tuesday. Is a meeting. No, you can't no, on the 16th can't. because okay. the planning board is here. Because fire. Fire. planning board is here. Okay. Was it fire? Can we, do we do it at fire? What's that? Can we do it at fire on Tuesday? Uh, yeah, fire department's open, so we could do it there. Okay. I'm okay with that. Are you good yeah. with that? 16th? Tuesday the 16th. Yeah, so that would be a motion to continue. I'll make a motion to continue the decision to rehear. To the next meeting, which shall be January 16th at the firehouse. Second. Anybody want to second that? I'll second, second. it. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. So that's that. Uh, the next thing that we had was amendment of the zoning bylaws. We already talked about that. So we're going to uh, act on that next month. To amend those. Happy holidays. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, can I yep. get one more uh, schedule item? Would sure. be the following month as well. February. Is that another? Yes. Another. Is that? That's another holiday. President's Day. Uh, the nineteenth. So can we do the twentieth? On a Tuesday. Hey, hang on. I'm just trying to move <laughs> one meeting at a time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't want to get in trouble next time I do this again. Sixteenth is moved. Where are we moving now? The twentieth. This is December. Oh, the nineteenth. February. February. Yeah. Sorry, that was. Oh, okay. um, oh, yeah. February twentieth. Tuesday. Uh, same thing. We can go to the fire department. Yeah. They're gonna love me. Firehouse subs. <laughs> can someone bring them? <laughs> I, well, so. I miss the firehouse subs. 
Jeff is getting us firehouse subs. Thanks, okay. Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> take it out. You, email take it out me your order. Your, your, uh, email me your order. I'll take care of it. So February 20th. 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 Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Okay, and we do have, I think we kind of mentioned it, some people who are interested. Yes. And um, so being members. So I did mention to Kim to have them come in on our January meeting it's for us to talk to them. Okay. Does that still work? Uh, is that right? Mm -hmm. What's that? Is that what, uh, is that what you're looking to do? Yes. So we'd have them to the meeting. Yeah, so we have two, two. people that are interested in becoming members of the zoning board. So in the past, we've kind of just reviewed stuff and not said anything. I think it's nice to have them come in so we can talk to them. Oh, so the board or the ZBA will get the, to The ZBA interview, interview the, the members? Wow. And we make so a recommendation. That's okay. the way it's supposed to happen. Is it? It hasn't, hasn't happened been that past. way ever. That's, yeah. if the ZBA, <laughs> I mean, if someone has a, if someone wants to be on ZBA and has yet to attend a meeting, watch the activities that goes on, understand what ZBA does, I question whether they would be, would be a candidate that should be sitting on the board. I know where st we need help. I get that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I'm not sure who these two candidates are, but we typically don't have anybody in the room. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you the views, the I video view, I can tell you the video views aren't that high. So I don't <laughs> think that's the well, case. I, so we get but, to interview, I think that's fine. Okay, yeah. and that's gonna be in January. Yeah. So two. yeah. Sounds great. Right. I think it's neat that we have a chance to do that because I don't recall being able to do that in the past. I, I'm surprised, that's why. I, I, Every board is supposed to make a recommendation. The board is something dealt to me the ones that appoint, right, but right. but the zoning board should at least make a recommendation that the person is. Well, we never had them come in. I think the last time we had applications come in and we took a look at the applications. I think you remember that. Yep. Took a oh, look yeah, and we kind of ranked them. Yeah. And then, then we, we did that, but not having them come in, which I think is, you know, a little, you know, we can get a better sense of who our applicants are. I think, I think that would be good. helpful for the board. So that's going to be January. Sounds good. And any other business before the board? Nope. Right. I have a motion to adjourn. At 9.15, 9.16. All second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. The meeting has ended. And Merry Christmas and Merry Happy Christmas. Holidays.